Boy, do you see this title? This title is Mushoku Tensei still has no competition. That, that's those are some fighting words. Now, in terms of the YouTube algorithm, titles like this are definitely gonna get people clicking on it. I want to hear what Mr. Ruti has to say. Give it to me. This anime needs no introduction. Yeah. It is not only peak isekai. It is peak anime. In a it is not only peak isekai, it's peak anime. I mean, is he wrong though? I think Mushoku Tensei is a beautiful written anime. The isekai of, of all the shitty isekais that exist. And there's a lot of like uh, isekais here actually. I don't even know if this Ghibli film is an isekai, but... You know, these are some top hitters, right? Like Overlord's fantastic. Mushoku Tensei, we're talking about that. It sucks what happens to this show in season 2. In fact, this Chi-chan right over here, this Chi-chan model is already pissing me off. This is not the Chi-chan I remember from Season 1. Tensura is doing amazing, but Season 3 animation, people are pissed off. Season 1 with, you know, Shield Hero is amazing. SAO, whether or not you want to, you know, admit or not, if you define an isekai as an other world, and if a video game is another world, then it is an isekai. Then we got, like, No Game, No Life, you know, Konosuba, but of all this shit right now, it's crazy that I'm placing ReZero at the top. Even though I'm only 10 episodes in, simply due to the sheer amount of emotions that I've been just getting out of the show compared to the other shows. Not to say they're bad, but I think that Mushoku Tensei is definitely a top pick amongst this list. A genre where only greatness is produced, there remains one king, Mushoku. Listen, I will not take the vending machine slander. This is an actually good slice of life, Isekai. And if you, see, if you actually saw it, then there should be no hate for this. Tensei. The only anime that can make erectile dysfunction the main antagonist for a whole season. From. That's a, that's, that's a good point. Like, that's, and that's what I said too. In season two, part one, like every week, Mushoku Tensei was still top in terms of analytics or like, you know, the amount of engagements on subreddits and different posts and forums and people talking about it. The fact that there was an entire season dedicated just towards fucking fixing his dick and having like a slice of life, like rom-com, like school style season, despite what Mushoku Tensei has shown us and it still did well. That just goes to show how good the show must be if you can get away with that. Pure misery to slice of life. This anime has once again shown why it stands above others. Now, before weebs get all angry and mm. downvote my favorite show, let's first go through the newest season of Mushoku Tensei, all right. just so you can grasp how great the show is. By the way, the people that's gonna downvote you are not even gonna—they're not even watching, right? People that downvote. Now, I don't know if the video deserves a downvote or not, but like motherfuckers that downvote, they rarely go through the whole video and then do it. They already have a preconceived idea of what your video is going to be or who you are and will just hate. After Rudy defeated his strongest foes in the series so far, no women and erectile dysfunction, the anime transitions into a slice of life where mm. he is living out his happiest days with his new wife. And as cute as this is, we all know we're watching Mushoku Tensei. That's right, we're waiting for turning point three, baby. Peace does not exist in this world. Rudy receives a letter from his dad that tells him, your sisters are on the way. Take care of them for your old deadbeat. And while one of his sisters... <laughs> the Paul Slander. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, there was a good reason for why he was a deadbeat, right? Why did he send Aisha and, uh, and, and Norn over? Because uh, it was going to be too dangerous, right? Begaret Continent is too dangerous. It's the second most co dangerous continent after, like, the Demon Continent. And therefore, it's better to send Rudy to, you know, so the kids to Rudy rather than keep them around. Care them for your old deadbeat. And while one of his sisters may be a good child who embraces unpaid child labor, the nice. other one is a giant crybaby. But... He ain't wrong. Understandably so. She's being separated from her only parent, sent to a distant land to mm. live with a brother she doesn't have fond memories of. Yeah. It's a hard thing to put a child through. And while this part may be full of nice and wholesome brother and sister bonding, the kind us anime fans aren't used to. <laughs> what anime is this? What do you mean your sweetest spot? I could care less because Norn is it's... annoying. So I'm skipping to the important part. And the... <laughs> Based, bro. The Narn hater should be eating up this video. Bro is like, yeah, the beautiful writing. It makes sense why this traumatized child at this young age would act immaturely, <laughs> but still fuck her <laughs> because she annoying. Or less because Norn is annoying. So I'm. I think that Norn was amazing at the end. 
when she popped off on Rudy and she was calling Rudy and Roxy out, that finale episode, I ain't gonna lie. Norm put up a fucking performance. Skipping to the important part. In the letter Rudy received from his father, he was also asked for backup to help search for his mother, leaving him with two choices. Stay with his wife, who is pregnant, to see the birth of his child, or leave his pregnant wife, go on a long journey, miss his kid's birth, to explore mm. a dangerous dungeon with his alcoholic father while picking up another wife. We have to remember, Rudy is now a loyal family man, so the second option is not really a choice. And I mean, is he a loyal family man? I mean, we know that he's not, if we're talking about monogamy specifically, but even his wife, what was the whole resolution at the end? Sophie was like, you know what? I knew this motherfucker was gonna cheat. I anticipated. Therefore, this ain't so bad. Welcome to the family, Roxy. What kind of family man is perceived like that by the main wife in the beginning? And it's also just plain stupid. Even God tells him, stay with your wife and get one of the Beast Girls pregnant. So, yes, that would have been a very interesting plot. Now, I wonder if uh, some people had a theory of like the human God for once telling, not really telling him a lie, but like convincing him to stay here while making it look like reverse psychology for him to like go to the Begari. You know what I mean? Saying like, oh, if you go there, it's gonna be banned. And rather than saying like, you need to go there. Before, he would always tell us a direct thing, but this time people were theorizing like, you think that like maybe he did this shit to like, I don't know, why, why would he do this shit now? That's another question. Like why, why in this specific instance would he do reverse psychology? I don't know. But your wife and get one of the beast girls pregnant so Stang is undoubtedly the best option but top three worst character norn convinces him otherwise after top three worst characters in mushoku tensei is norn i mean who are some characters that we really hate in mushoku tensei rudy <laughs> rudy <laughs> no, um i i think that like the the garbage politicians, the noble execs that were behind the execution of our grandfather and other shits, like, and in Asura Kingdom with our princess, you know, the bald guy that was trying to assassinate, like, those, those are shitty people, but I'm not sure if I really, if there's any characters that I actually, like, vehemently hate from the core roster of characters. The Norn hate was just content, just fun. It's a very realistic depiction of a kid that's very insecure of herself because she's so mid. But, I mean, there's nothing bad about her character. It's just an annoying kid being an annoying kid and me just making fun of her until she fucking pops off. After crying and complaining for half the episode, Rudy second guesses himself. So now, he has to break the news to his wife and miss out on one of the Beast Girls. But wow. it's not all bad, because with the help of this girl's name I can't remember, nah, his nah, journey's she. time is cut down and he might be able to see the birth of his child. So with no time to waste, Rudy and Elena Alice prepare for the long journey, say their goodbyes, and take off. They encounter a strange dungeon, giant birds, a succubus, and temptation to finally reach the labyrinth city of Rabban. Right. Rudy is now face to face with his alcoholic deadbeat father only to be met with the most tragic of news. His teacher Roxy has been lost in the dungeon She's for stuck. weeks making Rudy assume the worst has happened to her but he has not given up hope yet because after bonding with his dad and resting a little bit the group heads out to explore the labyrinth in search of roxy and his mother miraculously he senses roxy almost immediately i have no idea how he sensed her so easily i think that this is just all rng luck instinct right there's not an actual reason there's no science involved now we heard like a droplet of water falling down and rudy was like what I think a lot of people also, you know, make fun of how stinky Roxy was for being in there the entire time. But I, I'm not sure what the explanation was. It was just fucking instinct, just sheer intuition. Or how she even survived this long under these conditions. But that doesn't matter. Well, the surviving under circumstance conditions, it seems kind of crazy that she was caved in for a month but, and, and you know, survived this. But it was a combination of like use, using teleportation circles and there was like a resting place and she kept like going around and you know different paths and loops and basically it it, it didn't the enemy showed her just stay, staying on one side fending off like an, an enormous horde but from Annie's cut content we know that's actually not the truth but that doesn't matter because rudy 
is now Roxy's knight in shining armor. And yep. the party is now stronger, making the goal of finding his mother more achievable. But let's put that on hold because Roxy is now fully recovered. And we all know what's really important. And it's not the mother. It's getting the Roxy and Rudy ship going. Now it's time for the dungeon with a stacked party consist. It's not that Roxy got better, right? It, like, yes, she was like malnourished, but one of the funniest things, because they don't know what PTSD is, is listen, when you were in these life and death situations, you need to go back in before the PTSD sets in so that you can like overcome it and become numb to it. <laughs> that was one of the most fucked up things, but it does make sense. This thing of Rudy, Paul, Elina Lise, and Roxy clearing the dungeon's floor by floor is light work until they reach a dead end, leaving everyone stumped. So this is the perfect time for Paul to instill some knowledge on Rudy. <laughs> Dual wielding, great analogy, father. Yes, where we are. We, we listen to your advice and now we have two wives and it's not over. No, no, no. Santoryu. Eris. Season 3. She coming. Third wife incoming. But Rudy doesn't get it and instead solves the puzzle that opens a door. And behind this door is his mother that's trapped in a crystal on top of a giant mythical creature. Okay, I still think that this pose is bullshit. I, I still think that the pose should have been something like, <laughs> you know? But in order to have like a maiden that's like frozen and like sealed away and kept by some kind of boss, you want to have some sort of like romantic fictionalism, you know, where the, the maiden is like, oh, this is frozen like this. But it would have been so much funnier if her face was like, Ugh! <laughs> just like going like this as soon as she was about to get crystallized. Paul seeing this is blinded by rage and desperation and rushes in, completely disorganizing the party and putting everyone in danger. And in order not to get killed, they pull Paul out of the room to plan things properly. And this is where Paul starts yelling at Rudy for not mm. caring. Verbally abusive, physically abusive, and a alcoholic. <laughs> the whole and a deadbeat. I think that's like his seventh time calling him an alcoholic. The <laughs> trinity of other traits. But after throwing his little tantrum. I mean, why did he do that? Because mom was right there and we're pulling out. And Rudy was very level-headed and said, we shouldn't be panicking. We should be trying to strategize and figure out how we're going to do this. And Paul saw Rudy's calmness as uh, apathy as he doesn't care about your mom and then he started to get mad right but i love this guy's just complete bias on deadbeat alcoholic paul though rudy figures out cutting the limbs off the hydra and then burning them stops the regeneration so with a new plan they rush in and now it's only a matter of chopping it down piece by piece yeah but rudy oh my god rudy getting you know, in terms of the video structure, I think that, like, if you're going to come in with the video saying Mushoku Tensei still has no competition, you should be already talking about that rather than just giving... The bulk of your video is just a fucking recap of this final arc. And for sure, you're trying to build up some reasons as to why, you know, is it the best isekai and have some talking points. But I think that most people are not going to be able to get to your point if you're just stalling. Like, in every moment, you should have had a concise idea packaged and arguing why different isekais don't have competition against Mushoku Tensei. Like, for sure a video title like this is going to get the clicks. A lot of people are going to get triggered and watch it. But, like, I'm not sure if this format is really doing the justice in the terms of, like, pitch or the concept of the idea. Because I still have no idea why Mushoku Tensei has no competition. And you're going to say, well, um, hold up, let me cook. But again, the let me cook argument doesn't really work on people that have like no attention span. Like I'm going to watch it, but most people are not going to watch this and, you know, even understand what your point is. Should have just like give your takes in between like this, this entire time you could be pointing out examples, specific things in the storytelling or things that Mushoku Tensei does well that other isekai doesn't do well to really compel the audience on why it has no competition. Being too distracted gets put in danger's way and like to be honest this just seems like a lazy Mushoku Tensei video that you're just like brandishing with this volatile title while just giving a recap and then like I hope it's good here right like this part there's definitely there's there's a rating and a great isekai and is it really the best isekai section but I just 
I don't know. It feels like the body of the video could have incorporated those elements better. He loses his arm. How is he going to embrace his wife? Hold his child. Be his me. This is a huge loss. Oh yeah, his his father also died. But hey, they saved the mother. Who? <laughs> no empathy for Paul. Yeah, he's a deadbeat alcoholic deserved. Who has no memories. As tragic as this is, my anime rotted brain could see the flag planning from miles away. But yeah. even then, I was not expecting this. When you well, I think everyone knew that Paul was going to die, right? The amount of hints, clues, the fact that they delayed an episode to schedule this episode on fucking Father's Day. Everyone knew it was coming. But nobody understood, like, how it would be executed. I was not expecting this. When you think about how easily Zero Coochie affected Rudy, you can imagine how bad this is going to be. But luckily Zero for Coochie. him, he has a really kind... <laughs> Zero Coochie is crazy. <laughs> ...teacher who's willing to take it upon herself to pull him out of this slump. She, uh, embraces him yeah. in the most warm and loving way she can. So what was basically, I was mad. Now I wasn't mad, I was confused. I just wanted answers, right? And I wanted answers on why was intercourse the only way to overcome the trauma here, right? And after a lot of research, even Annie News couldn't fucking tell me. Until one, was it Annie News? Or was it you guys that told me? Basically there's this passage, a, a conversation between Talham, Talhand and the crew after this shit happened and I'm talking about trauma. And basically, there's no, you know, psych, like, like psychiatrist, there's no fucking mental health, you know, month awareness. There's none of that shit. There's no therapy. So back in those days, right? Yeah, I think you gave me the, uh, the screenshot from the Light Novel Maddox. Back in those days, intercourse is just a way to get over things, right? The dopamine rush, the intimacy of the act, you know, the pleasure you get from it. That is supposed to be like a common thing to get over trauma and problems. Therefore, Roxy forced herself upon Rudy do that right that, that's basically the most just base level ex like explanations and because like the show didn't explain like why intercourse specifically like why did roxy have to go in and fuck him but it's like all right that makes a lot more sense ken making a name for herself as best girl which isn't that hard to achieve because i don't really think roxy's best girl is she in the show <sighs> roxy selfie eris i don't really like those starter pokemons who do I like? I like Eris's mom, but she did. <laughs> Fuck. Um. Hmm. Elaine's a furry. Hmm. I need some time to cook to figure out what my favorite girl is. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah is forgotten forever. It's either Sylphie, his wife, Eris, who traumatized him into getting ED, or Sara, who almost made him second isekai himself. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the gilf. If you yeah, that's, that's a grandma-in-law, though. We can't be doing that shit. We're into getting NTR'd. We don't kink shame around here. Regardless, none of them can top Roxy because she single-handedly saved us from another season of refighting depression. Even True. True. The depression... As much as a lot of people are upset about the home record shit, I wonder if they would have been fine with the season of him getting over the depression. <laughs> um... Hmm... No, I'm fine with it. I honestly, I didn't think that this was... A lot of people were so pissed off. A lot of people were very mad. I was just having fun saying like, Oh, I can't wait for a fucking third flight. But I guess a lot of people really take this monogamy shit really seriously. Especially in fiction. Like, I get it. Like, I totally understand. There's a lot of reactors that's, you know, reacting with their fucking girlfriends or wives, right? <laughs> Imagine if they're doing reactions and they're doing with their girlfriend or wife, right? And like, you're like, whoa, third wife. Like, you can't say that shit because you're the other significant other guy. And like, mm, what the fuck? But to me, I didn't feel like it was that big of a deal, right? Like, it's just, it's a fucking dumbass show. Paul's been already fucking two wives already, right? Like, I didn't think it was too much, but I think Gigguk, and Gigguk was really mad about this. Gigguk was genuinely pissed off. And I didn't understand why. It was in the tier list video, the spring 2024 tier list video. And I couldn't comprehend why he thought this is such a big deal. And then I uh, tried to understand, and basically the context was, Mushoku Tensei is such a, such an amazing peak fiction, well-written, just godlike story to him. And therefore, he thought that this cheap way of introducing Roxy to solve the trauma and double wife seemed like, quote-unquote, trashy. 
and felt like it was going like not necessarily going rent a girlfriend way, but you wouldn't he he wouldn't he didn't expect a show like Mushoku Tensei to do these trashy things, which is kind of crazy to me because I I guess I never glazed Mushoku Tensei like that. Like I knew the writing was amazing, the character developments are amazing, but it also dabbled in these degenerate themes quite often to the point that I thought that a second wife is not a big deal, but to some people, this was such a huge point of contention to the point where they were just thinking about dropping the show. I'm like, really? This is the thing that's going to get you mad? Like, I don't know. M maybe, I maybe I'm just morally loose, right? I I'm a very evil, <laughs> uh, immoral, unethical person. So maybe I think that this is fine. But to a lot of people, this is... This is very like upsetting for them. Then he realizes this, making him want to marry her. But there's one problem: his stupid wife. What will so? Nah, that stupid wife is the reason why this is all allowed. She was the bigger woman here and accepted everything, even though this motherfucker did not deserve it. If we say she's going to be furious, possibly leave him and take the kids. Oh wait, she doesn't care. But do you know who does? Norn. I and you know what? Listen. I shit on Norn when she showed up. There's probably not a lot of people that got as mad as I did in YouTube in Mushoku Tensei reactions when Norn showed up. But I can also acknowledge that in the finale, she popped the fuck off. This performance when she roasted Roxy and Rudy, I genuinely love that shit. I love this character. But getting back on track, when Rudy finally returns home, he has to break the sad news about Paul, leaving the whole family devastated. Now, Paul may not have been my favorite. <laughs> Come on, shit on him one more last time. Come on, call him an alcoholic deadbeat character. But looking past his alcoholism, he was a good father. <laughs> I just always love how he always has to stick the alcoholism in there. Now, Paul may not have been my favorite yeah. character, but looking past his alcoholism, yeah. he was a good father sometimes. And after a long journey, his I think that Paul was a flawed character, but that's what makes him beautiful because it's a realistic depiction of a parent trying his best, even though he doesn't know what to do. I think that Paul is an extremely good father figure in terms of storytelling. Because he's not this perfect character. He's not. You think, and, and there's this like moment when you're growing up. Because like your mom and your dad are like gods to you when you're a child. Because you're a goo goo gaga brain. You don't know anything about the world. So you take whatever your mom and dad says as the fucking law. As the bible. But as you start to get older. You start to realize that they don't really have all that shit figured out. In fact, they're just trying their best. And there comes a moment when you realize that they have no idea what they're doing. And they're just as confused as you are, but they're just trying to make sense of it. And that's like a very scary moment, but also a liberating moment in childhood memories as you realize, you know what? They are just human like me and they're trying their best. And I understand why my dad or my mom would act in a, an unoptimal or like why they're getting mad or they're doing, you know, these dumb things because they're just human. And Paul, I think, is the perfect example of that. Paul was such a good written character. Yes, he beat the shit out of Rudy due to his insecurities. He didn't. He never had a chance to raise a kid because this kid was a fucking isekai character. But at the end of the day, he died saving his family, and I think that Paul is like a fantastic dad. Very flawed, but very realistic. Super emotional moments. We go back to the slice of life Mushoku Tensei. He now has two wives. His hmm. family's wait, wait for a third wife, baby. A third is coming with them and he had his first child now there's only one thing left to do fill in paul on everything he's missed out it's a very <laughs> yeah give him some fucking alcohol <laughs> this alcoholic is fucking going through withdrawing symptoms in the ground right now come on he's missed out it's a very touching moment rudy accepting that even though he may have been from a different world in this world he's the son of paul and yeah. even though they may have had a rocky relationship he still loved him it's a perfect ending that's only enhanced by the fact Season 3 is mm. greenlit. After years of watching Mushoku Greenlit or Redlit? <laughs> Eris Red, get it? Haha. <laughs> Tensei feels strange seeing Rudy has finally completed one of his biggest goals, reuniting his family. And although it's been a rough journey that has taken years, I know it's far from over. Alright, now we have 1 minute and 34 seconds left to cover the rating of Mushoku Tensei. Why it's a great isekai, 
And is it really the best isekai? This is the meat of the video. This is where the hot, spicy takes are gonna come from. Overall, I give this season a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think that's pretty adequate. Yep. I think that most animes that we watch are around like 6 or 5. Or maybe like, like 6 point something. Like 5 point something to 6 point something. The I think 7 is when it's just like, it's pretty good. A 7 out of 10 anime is like pretty fucking good. When it gets to 8 is when it's just like, I think it's great. And I would place like Konosuba in that tier. I would put like, ReZero right now is like a minimum 9 for me. I put Tensura like 8 out of 10 if you think about all the anime seasons compared. Like 8 I think is the realm of greatness. And 8.5 I think is an adequate rating for this season. I don't think I need to go into depth and explain to you why Mushoga Tensei is an amazing isekai. You laugh, cringe, cry, cu come, uh, mm. continue to see yeah. where he experience life while he journeys through this vast and beautiful world, only making you more invested in the characters and the world of Mushoko Tensei. But still, even then, is this really peak isekai? Well, the question is, Mushoku Tensei still has no competition, right? Is it peak isekai? Yes, but I think ReZero is peak isekai. I think that Eminence in Shadow is peak isekai. I think that Tensura is peak isekai. I think that fucking SAO is peak isekai. I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna say that shit. But does that mean that Mushoku Tensei has no competition? Because no competition means that Mushoku Tensei is on a league of its own. There is no other isekai that can scratch the itch that Mushoku Tensei can. And I think that's a wrong, I, I, I think that's objectively false. Like in that list of the animes that he's shown us in the beginning, there was many fucking isekais right off the bat that I was like, you know what? I think these are like straight up just, where, where was it, right? This Hold anime. On. Where is it? A genre. Like straight up in this list alone, right? I, I think that Tensura... Even season one of just Rising of the Shield was fucking amazing. I think Konosuba is fantastic. No Game No Life season one is still glazed to eternity. And ReZero's people are saying is the best isekai of all time. So how could you possibly say that it has no competition? Everything here is competing with Mushoku Tensei for the top tier rating, is it not? Really peak isekai. Yes. If you can't understand why this... No, no, no. I am agreeing with you. I think it is peak isekai. But the title of the video is Mushoku still, Tensei is still, it, it's not that it, it, it is still peak isekai, it's that it has no competition. Why is it no competition? Anime's peak isekai, you're probably a My Hero fan and yeah, would never yo. get it. But being serious, I understand every weeb has their favorite isekai, whether that's reincarnated as a slime, the anime 90% of isekais want to be, Eminence in Shadow, yes. the funniest, cringiest masterpiece, or even Conception, a story so intellectually written that everyone what the fuck is this one? Conception? Should we check this one out? It's too dumb to understand it. So instead of what- <laughs> Wait, why are there so many brides here? We definitely are conceiving a lot. Admiring is glory if they <laughs> hate them. Holy shit, it doesn't land! The list of girls don't end! Funny. All of them, great isekais. Okay. And with 50 different isekais coming out every season, there's yeah. a lot of worlds to delve into. But yeah. if we're talking characters, world, story, enjoyment, there's really only two threats to the crown of isekai. ReZero mm. and Konosuba. For sure, I think that they do compete. And what did we just talk about? I guess he just talked about, like, think about the parameters that he just compared. Threats to the crown of isekai, re story, and characters, too. But if we're right. talking char characters, right? Character development, characters, well rostered characters, yeah. Characters, world, world building for sure. World, story, story writing, which I think is pretty much the same as characters, but story could be also plot. I think that story is very. So let's separate that, right? We have. Like, this is just good writing, right? You got good characters, you got a good world building, you got a good plot, you know, this is all just good writing. Enjoyment. Just entertainment, which is subjective. Thank you, Ruben, for the tier one sub, man. I appreciate that. There's really only two threats to the crown of Isekai. ReZero and Konosuba. In terms of having all those three, you really don't think Eminence and Shadow can compete? I think I enjoy Eminence and Shadow more than Konosuba. I'm sorry, guys, like... Straight up, Konosuba is funny as fuck, but like, enjoyment and entertainment is very subjective. And I think that Konosuba is like, come great. Eminence in Shadow is also great. In terms of the characters, I think that Eminence in Shadow also has great characters. The story, now the plot is definitely considered weak because it's kind of more of like a joke series, right? 
it really embraces the cringe and the fucking dumbassery of isekais and fucking what Sid Kagano wants to be. And I guess one could see, like, you're basically comparing, like, Lord of the Rings when you're thinking about Mushoku Tensei versus, like, I don't know, fucking Pineapple Express in terms of movies. Like, like, like is there a great plot? Is there a great right? Well, it's not trying to be like that, right? But in the, of the series, I think that Konosuba, ReZero, even Tensuru, I say, these are all competing with Mushoku Tensei in those parameters that he just described. And Konosuba. But to me, they don't even come close because I have never watched ReZero. And <laughs> okay. And I'm not caught up on Konosuba. So okay. So it's still, again, y your, your title is it has no competition, but you're directly bringing up examples of anime that you haven't even started or finished, and you're raising it as comp. I I what are you doing? Like, if this is your personal opinion, I get it, but you haven't even watched ReZero, and you haven't even finished Konosuba, and you're putting those as the top two to compete against Re Mushoku Tensei. But what about the other series that you've... I How could you, like, conclude this... When the conclusion is just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I understand Mushoku Tensei is amazing. But at the very end here, like, you can't really conclude this shit if you can't even compare the series that you haven't even fucking seen. And at the very least, then you could compare some other series, I guess. It's, I don't think that Konosuba and ReZero are necessarily the only things competing with it either. I, I think that, again, Tensuru is definitely up there. I think that Eminence and Shadow is definitely up there, right? Maybe you could say that the story is lacking in, you know, Eminence and Shadow, and you could maybe say that the comedy is maybe lacking in Tensuru, but... <sighs> I think that Mushoku Tensei has a lot of competition, dude. Konosuba. But to me, they don't even come close because I yeah. have never watched ReZero, and I'm not caught up on Konosuba. So Mushoku Tensei, peak isekai. And sure. if you still disagree with me, as an anime fan, no, no, no one is disagreeing with you that Mushoku Tensei is peak fiction. People are probably just confused that you said it's no competition, then you brought up two examples that you don't even know about. And I only have one thing left to say to you. And yourself. And yourself. Now kill yourself. This. Honestly, the video's not bad. It's not. The recap was fun. The jokes were pretty funny to me. It's just that the video promised to tell us why Mushoku still Tensei still has no competition. But the bulk of the video is you just giving a recap of the final arc, which doesn't even really symbolize or is like the pinnacle of what Mushoku Tensei is supposed to be, then you bring in different points to like compare it with different isekais, but the isekais you bring up aren't even the fucking shit that you've even seen. So like the title is misleading, your end of the conclusion makes no sense. And then you're gonna say that people are going to say that you're wrong because they don't agree that Mushoku Tensei is not peak fiction. I think it is. It's just that you're misleading people on this video and like, what did you expect people to fucking you know, say, like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, overall, I, I agree with them. It's just, it was just confusing. All right, here's the guy's video. Here's the guy's video. Please go check out Mr. Ruti's video. But again, like, I don't disagree. Mushoku Tensei is amazing. It's just, I felt like I was really interested in this part of the conversation. Why does this have no competition? And if you brought in different examples from different isekais and related to how those isekais are lacking where Mushoku Tensei did better while going through these recaps, you could have delivered a much more compelling argument to the audience to the point where they could even agree with something as crazy as saying it has no competition. But I get it. This YouTube game, right? It is what it is.